the pyramid is essentially a model of the Earth, the northern hemisphere, and I'll show you how here. The thing you have to understand when you're looking at the measurement of the Earth in terms of its size and shape is that we have lines, everybody knows latitude and longitude. Latitude is measure north and south of the equator. Longitude is the measure around this way. Parallels are lines that run or the parallel to the equator. And traveling along one of the parallels, we would be displacing ourselves longitudinally. But parallels actually measure, you can see, the, this parallel here, this is probably the Arctic Circle. It looks to me like about 66 and a half degrees north. So it is parallel to the equator, right? So depending on what parallel you are, every line of latitude north and south has a corresponding parallel. And you know that from the equator to the North Pole is gonna be 90 degrees. And likewise, from the equator to the South Pole is gonna be 90 degrees of arc. Then in turn, we have meridian lines which are lines that run north-south, but actually measure distances east and west. So that if you traveled from one meridian to the next to another meridian, you would have traveled from east to west. Every point on the surface of the Earth has a local meridian. We have a local meridian here. And it's basically the way you would find it is if you walked out here, I believe this is generally south, isn't it, this way? So if we went out here and we looked exactly south, and exactly north, and then the zenith overhead, the point 90 degrees up from a flat horizon, we struck an arc from the south point through the zenith point to the north pole, that arc would be our local meridian. And as the Earth turns under that local meridian, we measure all uh, astronomical motion relative to our point on the surface of the Earth with respect to that local meridian. Now, You'll notice that as you go through the parallels, the parallels form virtually perfect circles. Um, the meridian lines, on the other hand, are not circles because of the flattening of the Earth, because of the expansion of the equator. If you draw a line around it this way, this way, and cut the Earth this way, it is not going to be a circle. If you cut it this way, it will be a circle. Okay, that creates very subtle differences in geometry. When you're measuring a meridian line north to south, what happens is that as you travel north away from the equator, if you are going on a perfect sphere, then each degree of latitude north would have the same distance. But it's not a perfect sphere, it's flattened. So as you're moving towards the North Pole, the Earth is actually flattening out. The Earth's radius is shrinking. So it's flattening out. What that means is that to, to, to traverse a degree of arc, you have to travel further as you get away from the equator towards the North Pole. Okay, I'm, I'm explaining this because you've got to understand this to see how the ancients actually understood, how they demonstrated to us that they understood the size and shape of the Earth with a high degree of accuracy. So again, parallels are gonna be in circles. And you're gonna notice that the biggest circle is gonna be the equatorial circle. And as you travel towards the, e the poles, those circles get smaller in size. So therefore, if you took the meridian lines, which would be the dotted lines, the distance between, say, one degree of meridians at the equator is gonna be greater than that distance between the same two meridians, say in our latitude here in Atlanta, which is about 34 degrees north, or further north. As you travel further north, those meridian lines converge until you would get to the North Pole, and then they, they meet each other and have zero distance between them. Okay, this is taken out of the Smithsonian meteorological tables, and what we're looking at here without belaboring this is you'll notice latitude zero degrees and you go through up to 90 degrees. And what this is showing is if we look in the statute miles right there, this says length of one degree of the meridian. So this is the line from equator up to the North Pole. Well, if you look at the first number, which let's see if we can zoom in a little here. You'll notice that at zero, when you travel, leave the equator and go to the first degree north latitude, you've gone 68.703 miles. 
But if you look down here at the very last one, when you traverse that last degree from 89 and you finally get to the North Pole, you've traveled 69.4 miles. So those degrees have stretched out. Okay, now this is important to understand how the ancients were able to demonstrate to future generations that they understood the size and the shape of the earth. And then we have one length of one degree of the parallel. If you notice right there, I don't know if you can read it from out there, but that says 69.172 miles. So think of a circle going around the Earth's equator. You've traveled one degree, one 360 of that distance around. You've gone 69.172 miles. Let's go halfway up from equator to North Pole, which would be 45 degrees. And you see right there, you've gone 49 miles. Then when you get up to the pole itself, when you're one degree away from the North Pole, you only have to go 1.2 miles because those meridian lines have converged. So now the thing to grasp here is that if we're measuring the size and the shape of the Earth, that's going to vary depending on where on the Earth we're making those measurements. This is important because what we discover is that the ancient peoples knew this and incorporated it into their architecture so that they would derive units of measurement that were ultimately based upon the size and shape of the earth where the structure was being built. Now let's take the most prominent one before we get to that. This is geodetic data. And you'll notice here we've got, going back to 1830, which was the first attempt in modern times to determine the size and shape of the earth. And Let's go, since that's meters, let's go to something we'll recognize, miles. We're talking about the radius here. And you'll notice as you're coming down through here, we get to these last two, World Grid System 72 and Geodetic Reference System 80 are the two that were determined by satellite measurements. And you'll notice that as we come through here, we've got a polar radius in miles and an equatorial radius in miles. And then we have the difference in the two radii right here. And uh, we assume that as we've come through, we're progressively getting better and better at measuring the size and shape of the Earth. And finally, with satellite measurements, we're getting down here and we've determined that the polar radius, for example, 3,949.8934, 3,949.8948. What does that translate into? Well, let's see, in terms of feet, that's a difference of, uh, oh, 250 feet, roughly, between, um, yeah, between these two measurements. In other words, between the first satellite measurement in 72 and the second one in, in 1980, the difference was about 250 feet, say. 